Hello and good morning dear students and welcome to Baidu's exam prep IS. Let us take a look at the various articles we have in our kitty today for the Hindu news analysis. So today we have taken up 10 articles out of which three will be discussed in detail from your mains perspective whereas the seven they will be discussed in short for your prelims perspective. For the mains perspective, for detailed analysis, we have these three articles. First is, tropical forests may be getting too hot for photosynthesis. You know, photosynthesis is the process by which the trees, the plants, they take up carbon dioxide and sunlight in presence of chlorophyll to produce food. They are the primary producers of the ecosystems, right? So, this process of photosynthesis, it will be threatened because of climate change. So, this particular article is important from GS3 perspective. The second article is, missed childhood TB cases. They might affect India's ability to achieve TB elimination by the year 2025. Now, this article, it will be useful both for GS2 as well as GS3. The third article is regarding the export duty that has been imposed on onion exports. Now, apart from that, this within this, we'll also discuss the export duties on rice as well as ban of certain varieties of rice from export. In the prelims bite section, we'll take up the first article that is regarding the nomenclature of the various spots related to Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3 that was done yesterday. We have another article on a folk art tradition, a folk dance of Kerala known as Sita Kali. Also Sita's story. The next article is regarding a fly known as blow fly. How a research done on these flies, it will help in further improving our ability regarding investigation in certain cases which require post-mortem. The next article is regarding Asian Development Bank and the Central Government of India. They are going to open a climate change and health center in New Delhi. The next article is regarding the National Commission on Safai Karmacharis, how the Supreme Court has seen the government's reply regarding appointment of members in this panel. The next one is regarding longevity genes that have been found in naked mole rats and how they have been transferred into mice. What has been the success? What are these longevity genes? The last one is regarding the upcoming projects of ISRO. What are its upcoming plans, its upcoming projects now that Chandrayaan 3 project was extremely successful. So let us take a look at our first article that forests may be getting, tropical forests may be getting too hot for photosynthesis. So what is the context over here? See according to this study that was published in this journal known as Nature, an estimated 0.01% of all leaves in the tropical areas, they surpass the critical temperature. That means these 0.01% of leaves, they are not able to do photosynthesis anymore. In fact, according to further details given by this study, the tropical forests, if the temperature, the current temperature of air is supposedly 22 degrees, if it increases by 3.9 degrees Celsius, if this temperature increases by 3.9 degrees Celsius, then this will be a tipping point. What does this mean? That if the temperature in the tropical zones, it goes beyond the 3.9 degrees Celsius limit compared to the current temperature, then the leaves, the tropical forest, their leaves, they won't be able to undertake photosynthesis. Now, why is photosynthesis so important? First, the plants, the green plants, they are the primary producers. 
they produce the food because of which the ecosystems they sustain okay the normal ecosystems they sustain secondly during the process of photosynthesis these plants they take in the carbon dioxide that means they sequester they reduce the amount of carbon dioxide by sucking it in by sequestering it in so carbon sequestration is another important role that is related to photosynthesis so what will be the threats related to this see in addition to this temperature increase, this general temperature increase due to climate change and global warming, deforestation as well as fragmentation of the forest. For example, this is the entire forest region. What is fragmentation of forest? It gets divided into smaller, smaller parts. For example, there is a road project that has divided once 100 square kilometer of forest into four smaller pockets. So this is fragmentation of forest, right? So we have been undertaking deforestation. We have been creating fragmentation of the forest land and because of which again what is happening? The local temperature is changing. See forests, they have a very important role to play when it comes to moderation of climate of any region moderation of weather, moderation of temperature, right? So if the forests are removed, if they are fragmented, then the local temperatures, they will also change. A very good example here is the urban heat island effect, right? So now tropical forests, many tropical forests, they are very critical carbon stores. Now, if the ability of these tropical forests to do photosynthesis reduces, what will happen? A vicious circle will start. What is going to happen? See, increase in temperature will reduce ability to photosynthesize. This will lead to what? Increase in quantity of carbon in the form of carbon dioxide and this will further lead to increase in temperature. So a vicious circle it will set in. Apart from that another threat from this is that these tropical forests they have richest amount of biodiversity that is available here. Now if their ability to do photosynthesis reduces that means their ability to create biomass it will also reduce right so this means that there will be less amount of food available for the herbivores that means their population will decline less amount of food available than for carnivores so entire biodiversity will be threatened See, already we are undergoing the sixth mass extinction, right? And this particular study says that this extinction will get aggravated because of climate change. Apart from this study that was published in today's newspaper, there is another very important study that was done in USA around two weeks ago. Now this study was also done on the forests and according to this study by US Department of Agriculture by the year 2070, the forests of USA, they will begin to release more carbon than they store. That means that the sequestration that will be reduced because of this, what is sequestration? The ability of the forest to suck in carbon dioxide, right? So there will be a sequestration reduction of 150 million metric tons, which is equivalent to setting up and operating 40 coal-based thermal power plants. So the same amount of pollution that will be generated by these thermal power plants, same amount of carbon, it won't be sequestered by these forests. There will be a reduction in carbon sequestration by 150 million metric 
tons. Now, what is the reason and why this study done in the USA is important for us? It is because this study, though it was done only in USA, it can have an impact. This study, the results of this study, they can be they, similar results. They can be seen in other countries as well because of the reason. See, the reason why there will be a reduction in sequestering ability of the forest is that as the age of the trees increases, their ability to sequester carbon, it reduces. Why? Because the young trees, they keep on sequestering a lot of carbon and this carbon that is sequestered through the process of photosynthesis, it gets converted into the biomass of the tree. So the tree it gains height, it gains width, right? It grows, it grows a lot of leaves, a lot of fruits, everything, right? So it quickly sequesters the carbon and it converts that into biomass. Now younger trees, they grow at a much faster rate compared to the old trees. Now because of human intervention, what is happening? The normal process that usually happens in the forest is that the old trees, they die off and the young trees, they keep on growing. Now because of human intervention, this natural process, it is getting affected. So what is happening is that these old trees, they continue to stay in the forest while the new trees, they are not growing. So as of now, in USA, according to this study, there are not enough young trees that are being planted or given a proper chance to age. As a result of that, the mature forests, their quantity is much higher compared to the young forests. And that is by, by 2070. What will happen? By 2070, USA will begin to release, the forests of USA will begin to release more carbon than they sequester. Okay? So this particular study, it is done in USA, but it can be extrapolated to other regions of the world as well. Now what is the solution for all this? See, first solution, very simply we can state is having ambitious carbon climate mitigation goals. We have Paris Convention in place under which the countries have given their targets to reduce global warming, right? But are they taking place? Are these targets being fulfilled? Are these targets being successfully monitored? That is a big question, right? Moreover, you have seen in July 2023, this particular month has already been declared as the hottest month on record, right? So we, all, we need to really start monitoring the way in which our INDCs are being undertaken and whether or not the things that they promised, they are being achieved. Second, we need to reduce deforestation. Now this is again a very natural thing to say. We need to reduce deforestation. We need to reduce forest fragmentation. And lastly, we need to grow new trees. So for this, we need to undertake both afforestation and reforestation. Now, what is the difference between afforestation and reforestation? Afforestation is creating forest from the scratch in a location where there was no forest initially, but now we are growing the forest. So that is afforestation, creating forest from the scratch. Next, we have reforestation. If any forested land, it has been depleted, the forest has been cut down, then 
planting new trees in such a region which already was a forested land but due to certain reasons it lost its forest cover that process is reforestation so these are the three simple solutions simple when we say them but very difficult in their execution so these are the solutions and hopefully if we undertake them a global warming it would be limited to the paris convention goals of keeping it under 2 degree centigrade preferably under 1.5 degree celsius compared to the average temperatures before the industrial revolution okay now we come to our second article which is regarding tuberculosis now the context of this article is that childhood tuberculosis it might jeopardize our mission to eliminate tb from the country by the year 2025 the global goal for elimination of tb is 2030 according to sustainable development goals but india being very ambitious wanted to keep this goal 5 year in advance compared to the global goal so that is why we kept it at 2025 now generally children they are vulnerable to a lot of diseases compared to the adults because adults they have grown up their immune system is properly developed it knows which disease to attack right children their immune system is not that grown right so that is why they are more vulnerable to any kind of diseases especially tuberculosis so globally right now it has already been seen that tuberculosis is the leading cause of death of children from infectious diseases so there are a lot of infectious diseases right covid was one of them we have ebola we have sars many other communicable diseases infectious diseases of all of those infectious diseases the highest number of deaths among the children is due to what tuberculosis now according to world health organization the biggest challenge with regards to childhood tb is gaps that exist in detecting tb cases amongst the children in fact according to an october 2022 report by the who there are approximately 1.2 million children who get the disease under the age of 15 years who get the disease annually and out of these many children around 56% of them their disease is never detected so this is the biggest problem with regards to tb in children the lack of our ability to detect tb in the children now what is india's status with regards to childhood tb cases india has one third of the global load 31% of the global childhood tb cases they come from india apart from that india back in 2012 declared tb to be a notifiable disease that means that any case of tb it would have to be notified to the public health authorities so that these authorities they can track the patient and ensure that the patient is taking the proper treatment for the disease so that the patient they can recover from tb right so while the number of tb cases that are being notified in india it has increased since the year 2015 for the adult cases it has continuously increased since 2015 but with regards to childhood tb cases the notification of these childhood tb cases the notified childhood tb cases they have remained constant at just 6% every year so their number has remained constant it has not increased so that means that not all the no tb cases amongst the children they are being notified to the public authorities because they are not being notified these patients these children who are inflicted with tb we are not able to track the progress of their treatment 
Also with regards to case detection amongst the children suffering from TB, in 2020 alone, according to various estimates, around 40% of the cases in India, they remain undetected. WHO said in October 2022 that around 56% of the child TB cases, they remain undetected. In India, this figure is lower. It is only 40%, but still this is quite high. Considering that one third of the childhood TB cases, they come from India. There is another challenge with regards to this. That challenge is that because of the COVID pandemic, what happened? There has been a reduction in the BCG vaccine. What is BCG vaccine? Bacillus, Calmet, Guerin. Now this vaccine is given to prevent childhood TB, meningitis and miliary disease. Now because of COVID, what happened? There was lockdowns. People were scared to go to the hospitals. So there was a reduction in the number of children which were getting the BCG vaccine. The coverage which was 92% in 2019, it came down to only 84% in 2021. It further increased later in 2022. But still, there do exist certain children who have never received the BCG vaccine. So that can further increase the number of TB cases in children in India. Now what are the challenges in TB detection amongst the children? Now World Health Organization said that one of the biggest challenges to TB reduction and elimination in the world is what? Detection of TB cases amongst the children. See, diagnosis of childhood TB, it often relies on various tools like x-rays, like chest x-rays, okay? However, it has been seen that such tools, their reliability and their accuracy, it is less. Moreover, there are two tests that are associated with TB. One is molecular tests. Second is microscopy. The molecular test, it is highly advanced and very sensitive and accurate. Compare that to microscopy or smear microscopy test, its accuracy is less. Also, it is not able to identify any kind of resistance, drug resistance amongst the patient for whom this test is being conducted. Okay, so in India, Though children are required to undergo this highly sensitive molecular test, but even now, these smear microscopy tests, they are more common compared to these molecular tests. Another problem with smear microscopy in terms of children is that this requires what? Sputum samples. Right? Now, sputum sample is required for this smear test. However, the children which are under the age of 5 years, they have a difficulty in producing the sputum for this test. Second thing is that the bacterial load in the children is low. As I said earlier, children, is, children are highly vulnerable to the disease. So that means even with low bacterial load, they can get the extreme forms of diseases that the adults will get only because of high bacterial load, right? So low bacterial load exists in the children and because smear microscopy is not that sensitive, not that accurate a test, it is not able to detect TB amongst the children. So these are the biggest challenges in detection of childhood TB. Now, 
India has the goal of achieving TB elimination by 2025, right? So what are the various initiatives that we have put in place for this purpose? The first is India's National TB Elimination Program, which was earlier known as Revised National Tuberculosis Control Program, RNTC. Now this program was started way back in 1997 to control and eliminate the disease. The target for elimination is 2025. Later on, on 20th anniversary of this particular program, we brought in the National Strategic Plan for TB Elimination. Now this plan will work between 2017 to 2025. The World Bank is supporting us with this particular program. Now what are the various aims of this program? Detect, improving the detection of TB, treat, making sure that all the people who are suffering from TB, they get adequate treatment opportunities and there is proper follow-up regarding their treatment so that they do not leave the treatment midway. Third, prevent TB. If proper detection, proper treatment is done, proper measures are told to the family members to follow so that they do not catch hold of the disease while taking care of the person who is suffering from TB. That will help in what? Prevention of the disease. Fourth, they want to, under this plan, we want to build capacity of the various institutions, of the various personals who are working for reducing TB cases in India. We will also build capacity of the policy makers so that they can develop proper policies for elimination of TB. Apart from that, for building capacity for all these things, we require what? Funds. So this, another aspect of this particular plan is to increase availability of funds for all these purposes. Apart from that, in September 2022, Pradhan Mantri TB Mukt Bharat Apiyan was also launched. It had two major components. One is Nikshay Mitra Initiative. Now Nikshay Mitra Initiative. Who is Nikshay Mitra? Nikshay Mitra, they are certain donors who can support either health facilities or any block or any urban ward or a district or a state. So these will donate to either of these blocks, wards, districts, health facilities or states to supplement government efforts regarding TB elimination in India. So these will be what? Niksha Mitras. Now aim of this initiative is to provide additional diagnostic, nutritional and vocational support to the TB patients to identify that they have the disease, to help them eliminate the disease properly so that they can get proper nutrition, their body can get proper nutrition for elimination of TB at an early stage and vocational support. Now because of TB, many of them, they might lose their jobs. So vocational support will be provided so that they can start their self-employment journey. So the money that these donors, these Niksha Mitras will provide, it will be used for all three purposes, all these three purposes for the TB patients. Apart from that, there is Niksha Digital Portal. Now this portal has been set up for community support. The whole community, they will come together to support the patients who are suffering from tuber. So this is Niksha Digital Portal. So these are the two major components of Pradhan Mantri TB Mukt Bharat Abhiyan. Apart from that, we have various other initiatives that have been put in place for this particular disease. One is Niksha Potion Yojana. Now Potion, that means nutrition. So under the Niksha Potion Yojana, 
a direct benefit transfer of 500 rupees per month will be done to TB patients so that they can buy proper foods that have enough nutrients that will help their body fight against TB. Okay, so 500 rupees per month. There is also another awareness campaign that has been started by the government of India that is TB Harega Desh Jeetega. TB Harega that means TB will lose and the Desh that is the country will win. So this is the name of the campaign. Now this campaign it has been put into place to increase awareness regarding the disease so that the patients or the patient's family they know when to go for screening of the disease how to undertake the treatment how to ensure that the patient is getting proper nutritional diet and also the other members of the society they should not have any kind of stigma against the people suffering from TB so this particular campaign, it aims to increase the awareness and reduce the stigma against TB in the country. So that is the purpose of this campaign. Also there is something called Niksha Ecosystem. That is the National TB Information System. Now this was established in the year 2014 to improve data management for effective TB control and treatment. We can have proper data regarding how many people are suffering from the disease, how many of the cases are active, how many of the people they have been properly treated, which state, which district, which block, which ward has the highest instances of the diseases. We can have all this data at this one portal, Niksha ecosystem, so that the government can take necessary policy action regarding the same. So these are the other initiatives related to TB in India. Now we move to the third article. The third article is regarding an export duty of 40% that has been imposed on export of onions from India. Now this duty has been imposed starting from August 19, 2023 till the end of the year that is 31st December 2023. Apart from imposing this duty, the government has also declared that it will offload its stocks in the wholesale market. So whatever stock that government has, it will offload the stock in the wholesale market. Okay. So that in the retail market, from where finally the consumers, they get the item. In the retail market, the price of the onion, it can be controlled. The inflation in the prices is not very high. Okay. So this is another effort. Now before we delve further into why this is happening, let us check in a slight amount the brief background of onion crop in India. See in India, India is one of the major producers of onion. In India, there are three seasons when onion crop it is grown. First is the kharif plant. The kharif plant, it is planted in July, August. And it is harvested between October and December. Okay, remember this. Kharif, it is harvested in October till December. Second is late Kharif, which is sown between October and November and harvested between January and March. Third is the Rabi season, the Rabi season of onion, where, which is harvested... <coughs> around the end of March to the month of May and planted between December and January. Now please note that this Rabi crop, it contributes to most production in a calendar year. So most of the onion that we get is through this Rabi season. These are the minor ones, this is the major one. Now who are the major producers of onion in India? We have Maharashtra which produces almost 39% 
of total onion of the country. Second, we have Madhya Pradesh at 17%. The other major producers include Karnataka, Gujarat, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, Rajasthan, Haryana and Telangana. Okay. Now, please note that this is harvested between October and December. This is harvested around March to May. Okay. So, March to May, it is harvested and the next crop is harvested only by October. So, this is one thing you need to keep in your mind as we go to the next slide. Now, why? Why are these measures being undertaken by the government? Why have we imposed this export duty? Why is government offloading its stocks into the wholesale market? It is being done to check the availability of onions to prevent any kind of price rise and inflation in the cost of onion in India. Okay. Now what is the reason? Why are we afraid that there might be an increase in the cost or reduction in the availability of onion in the later part of the year? See, here are the reasons. First, what happened in February this year, there was higher than normal temperature. So this led to what? That time of crop, it led to an early maturity of the crop. Which crop? Rabi crop. So the Rabi crop, it matured early. This led to a small sized bulb. The bulb, which is the actual onion that you eat. This is the stalk, right? It has seeds, which are also known as kalanji. Right? So this is the bulb that we actually eat, this onion bulb. So what happened is that because there was higher than normal temperature in February, there was early maturity of the crop and the bulb size was smaller. So if earlier what happened, one kilo of onion, it had say four or five pieces of onion. Now what will happen, one kg onion will have 10 to 12 pieces because the bulb size is smaller. The second problem is that between late March to early April this year there was unseasonal rainfall. Now this unseasonal rainfall it affected one the quality of the onions the type of onions that were getting the quality it was reduced. Secondly it reduced their shelf life by about a month. Now because the shelf of life was reduced, shelf life of the onions was reduced, the farmers they got into a panic mode. They thought we won't be able to store it properly. So they did panic selling in the markets. Okay, a few up until a few months ago, onions they were selling for as less as 1 to 2 rupees per kg. Right? So that was again another problem. Now both these things, they affected what? The Rabi crop. And the Rabi crop was what? Rabi crop was providing us the maximum amount of onion in a calendar year. So the crop that was to provide us the remaining months of onion, it got badly impacted. Now as a result of this, what happened? The production of onions that we are estimating right now, it has reduced. It has come down to 31.1 metric tons from 31.7 in 2021-22. Also, apart from this, the area under the production is also expected to contract by 7%. So, double whammy. One, the entire total production that we are estimating is reducing in general. Second, the area under production is also reducing because when the farmers saw during the Rabi season, when they harvested their crops in March, between March to May, they had to panic sell the crop. Now, because of this panic selling, they were not able to get proper prices for the onion. So what happened? They thought that because I'm not even getting my input cost, by selling this onion, why should I plant it once again? So the farmers, they got demotivated for planting onions in their field. Now there is another concept known as lean season. 
so here i stated that this is harvested between january march sorry march to may rabi crop is harvested between march to may the next crop is harvested the kharif crop is harvested only in october so what happens there is a lean season towards the end of september when the rabi crop it starts depleting while the next crop is not ready for cultivation now this year because of the impact of higher temperatures in february and rainfall in late march and early april what is happening the lean season instead of coming by the end of september it is going to come by early september as the rabi crop was affected so the production was not enough so what is happening the stock of onion it is going to get depleted much earlier compared to previous seasons right so this is another reason one of the biggest reason why we are expecting that by late september october because this is what this is also the festival season for india for most of the part of india right and during this time if there is a rise in prices this will impact a large proportion of our population right so this lean season in india this year it will be more severe and that is why the government had to come and impose this 40% duty on the export of onions so that the sellers they do not export onions and instead the onion stays in the country stays in the domestic market instead of going to the international clients now with regards to india's onion exports india is the third largest exporter of onions just after the netherlands as well as mexico in the global trade of onion we have a share of 10% and what are the major countries to which we export onions we have bangladesh malaysia uae sri lanka nepal indonesia qatar vietnam oman and kuwait now as we reduce as we impose this 40% duty what will happen the exporters they will experience a higher cost of selling it to international markets so what instead of international markets they will try to divert their stocks to domestic markets this will lead to what an increase in prices in international markets so these countries these major importers of onion from india they will experience an increase in price of onions in their domestic markets now this comes just as a tail end of what happened in july in july we also called for a export on ban of certain varieties of rice now india is the world's biggest rice exporter we have 40% global rice trade share for onions it was 10% for rice it is 40% india is also known as the rice bowl of world now 20th july 2023 just about a month ago what happened india banned the export of non basmati rice non basmati basmati rice could still be exported par boiled partially boiled rice could still be exported but any other variety non basmati non par boiled rice it could not be exported since 20 july 2023 now this came just 3 days after russia pulled out of the black sea grain deal for export of what wheat so there is what a lack of availability of both rice as well as wheat in the international markets leading to what an increase in the prices of grains in the international market later just yesterday on 26th august 2023 india also imposed a 20% export duty on parboiled rice export okay 
So on onion we put 40% export duty. On parboiled rice, partially boiled rice, we have now imposed 20% export duty. So this will lead to what? An increase in prices furthermore because even the parboiled rice, it, its cost will increase in the international market because of this duty. But why are we doing it? What is the reason? For onion, we know what the reason was. The Rabi crop was affected because of weather related problems. That has led to an increase in the lean season of onions. For rice, the reason for these export bans and export duties is rise in the food prices, in general food prices and resultant inflation in the country. That is one reason. The second reason is that we are expecting an El Nino. So because of this El Nino, there might be disruptions in the rice market in India. There might be shortage of rice crop in India because of El Nino and related lack of rainfall. In the regions where rice crop is grown. So we are expecting this. We are expecting this issue. So that is why we are taking a preemptive step to reduce any kind of inflation in India because of these reasons. Now what is the impact of this rice export ban? See there are many countries across Asia, Africa, Europe, even USA, Middle East that rely on rice imports from India to meet their food demand. Now suddenly there was a disruption in supply of rice in the global market. This can lead to what? Food scarcity in many of, this country, many of these countries, especially Asian and African countries. There can also be an increase in price of the grains of rice grains and this can lead to potential unrest in these regions. This higher prices, non-availability of food, it can cause what? Extreme unrest in these regions as well. Now, seeing this as an opportunity, seeing India's ban as an opportunity, Thailand, it has stepped in to fill this void. It has started to increase its rice exports. And this has led to what? This has been improving the economy of Thailand. Okay. So this is about this article. The article was talking about onion exports. We added the impact of rice exports and the rice export ban by India as well. Now we come to the prelims by its section. The first article in the section is regarding the new nomenclature of various points on the moon that has been declared yesterday by the PM of India. First is Shiv Shakti. Now these terms, they might be important from your prelims perspective, okay? They might ask you a question. The terms Shiv Shakti and Tiranga, they are in news because of which reason, okay? So Shiv Shakti, it is the point on the southern pole of moon where Vikram lander of Chandrayaan 3, it landed. Another point is Tiranga. Now Tiranga, it is related to Chandrayaan 2. It is a point where Chandrayaan 2, it left its, it left its footprint on the surface of the moon. Apart from that, the day on which there was successful soft landing of Chandrayaan 3 lander and rover on lunar surface, that is on August 23, this day, it will now be celebrated as the National Space Day to celebrate science, technology and innovation in India. Moreover, according to ISRO, with regards to this Chandrayaan 3 mission, two out of three of the objectives of this mission, they have been fulfilled. What was the first objective? Safe and soft landing on the lunar surface of our lander. Okay. Vikram lander. The second objective was rover should start roving on the surface of the moon. Rover was Pragyan rover. It is successfully roving or moving around on the surface of the moon. So this is also done. The third one, the third objective, it is ongoing. That means it is 
what is the third objective conducting in c2 experiments on the lunar surface so this is on going so two are completed the third is on going so none of them have failed the second article is about the sita kali dance now sita kali dance it is a traditional folk dance form of the state of kerala kathak kali comes from kerala sita kali also comes from kerala now this particular dance was primarily performed by dalit artists which belong to either veda or pulaya communities now veda communities veda community they are primarily field workers they work on agricultural field and before onam they used to perform this dance in the courtyards of their feudal lords later the pulaya committee it popularized this dance the sita kali dance and it started to be performed in village squares as well so not just for feudal lords it started being performed for general public as well especially during the days running up to the festival of onam okay now this particular dance it involves storytelling now sita sita is a goddess who is related to what ramayan the epic ramayan so this particular dance it involves storytelling it tells stories from ramayan specifically related to sita her trials tribulations her life her choices how they impacted her so all this is being told through the sita kali dance now the songs on which these dances were performed they were orally passed on from one generation to another so this dance includes a blend of storytelling songs these songs and fast movements so songs there is singing there is dancing and there is story telling now it since 1980s this dance form its popularity it was reducing a lot so it is considered to be a dying art form what is the biggest challenge why is it a dying art form because most of the people most of the artists who are involved in performance of this dance they belong to very unprivileged communities and they do not want to ditch their work from which they are getting money for their survival for art okay so they don't want to ditch their work for art and that is why this art form it is dying in it is considered a dying art form now there is one person known as t n sajimon who has been trying to revive this particular art form this particular dance form he was also given the kerala folklore academy award for the year 2018 for his efforts to revive the sitha kali dance okay so this is about the sitha kali dance next we move to flies postmortems and forensics okay so there are certain flies that belong to caliphoridae family in the order dipterae now these flies are the first visitors to inhabit and colonize any dead body so when a person dies these flies they come to the body they start laying their eggs eggs convert into maggots maggots get converted into flies okay so studying the stage of development of these flies in any body help us identify the time of death the lesser the stage of development that means the death is more recent the more the stage of development that means the death has taken place a long time ago okay now these flies they are also known as blow flies so they inhabit dead bodies now according to a latest study by kerala police academy the development rates of these flies which we study to identify the time of death they change with season so that means in certain seasons this development is faster compared to other seasons now in case of investigation what happens it is very essential to know exact time of death 
right so that proper investigation can be done the cameras can be checked the cctv cameras can be checked at that particular time the suspects they can be questioned accordingly right so time of death is very important in investigation of any murder cases right or any cases involving dead bodies so that is why this particular study it can be useful for this because with seasons the rate of development of these flies changes so that is why we need to know which season this death took place so that accordingly the post-mortem can be done and accordingly the time of death can be identified and the investigation undertaken okay so these are blow flies which belong to califuradae family okay what is family what is order so basically the classification in biology is starts from domain after which comes kingdom after which comes phylum class order family genus and species okay so these blow flies they belong to the family of califuridae and the order of diptera the next article is regarding climate change and health hub that is to come in the state of Delhi, in New Delhi by the joint efforts of Asian Development Bank as well as Central Government of India. Now this comes just after India backed another climate change and traditional medicine related deal. So India backed the first WHO World Health Organization Center for Global Traditional Mac medicine which is to be established in the state of Gujarat in Jam Nagar. Now what is the need for this climate change and health hub? See because of climate change what is happening? Many diseases they are re-emerging many of them are freshly emerging the severity of certain diseases, it, incre it is increasing because of natural disasters. Certain diseases, they are reaching those locations where they were never endemic. For example, malaria in Europe, dengue in Europe, dengue in USA and malaria in USA, right? So, that is why. We need to establish a proper center so that climate change related impact on health they can be identified and solutions can be provided. Now quickly about the Asian Development Bank. Now it was established in the year 1966 on December 19 with 31 members. The headquarter of ADB is in Manila in Philippines. Currently it has 68 members increased from 31 members as the founding members out of these 68 49 are Asians and the rest of them they are non-Asian members the National Commission for Safai Karmacharis the Supreme Court it has sought the government's response in a plea that has been put in front of it regarding appointment of members to this commission so as of now, there are four vacancies in this commission. Now this commission, it was established as a statutory body back in August 1994. Now what was the act under which it was made a statutory body? National Commission for Safai Karmacharis Act 1993. Now this body... It remained a statutory body till the year 2004. In 2004, this particular act, it lapsed. So currently, this body is a non-statutory body existing under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. Now the commission, the tenure of this commission, because it's not a statutory body anymore, the tenure of this commission, it is extended from time to time through government resolutions. The latest extension of this body is still March 2025, 31st March 2025. So apart from working for the Safai Karmacharis, the body got 
the mandate to even oversee another act that was placed in 2013. That is the prohibition of employment as manual scavengers and their rehabilitation act. So what is the membership of this body? It has one chairperson. It has one vice chairperson and five members. So total how many? Seven. Seven people are a part of this commission. Out of seven, four are vacant. Four of these seats, they are vacant. And that is why the plea was placed in front of Supreme Court. And Supreme Court has sought a reply from the government for the reason why these four seats, they are vacant. The next article is regarding a longevity gene. Longevity means increasing your age. Increasing the duration for which you are alive. That is longevity. Now these longevity genes, they have been identified in naked mole rats. Now naked mole rats, one very curious thing about them is that they can live up to 41 years. Whereas compare that to normal rodents, of similar size, they live only for approximately 4 years. So naked mole rats, they can live 10 times more than comparable other same size rodents. So that is one big peculiar thing about these naked mole rats. Also, they do not often contract diseases like neurodegenerative diseases, like cardiovascular diseases, like arthritis and cancer. So what is the reason? Why are they living for so long? Why are they not contracting these diseases? The reason is this particular gene. Hyaluronin synthase 2. Okay. So this is the name of the disease. So, sorry, the gene. So what does this gene do? Now this gene is responsible for making high molecular weight Hyaluronic acid, HMWHA. Now the naked mole rats, because of this gene, they have 10 times more of this particular acid in their bodies compared to the rest of the rodents. Now it was identified that when this acid was removed from the cells of these naked mole rats, these cells, they were more likely to form tumors and die off. So that means this particular acid is the reason for longevity of these naked mole rats and it comes from this particular gene. So according to a study that was done, an experiment that was done by University of Rochester, what did they do? They transferred this gene to mice. Now this led to an increase of 4.4%. The age of the median age of these mice, it increased by 4.4% when this gene was inserted in the mice. This gene of naked mole rat was inserted in the mice. So that means this is a very big breakthrough research with regards to increasing the longevity. Right now, it has been in included, this gene has been placed only in mice. Later, maybe in many upcoming decades, humans might also get such genes. We might also start getting such genes to increase our age, increase our longevity. Now, this is the last one. ISRO's plan after Chandrayaan 3. So Chandrayaan 3 is successful. What other projects is ISRO working upon? So this is very important from your prelims perspective. Regarding what are the mission aims? Which country are we working with in regards to these missions? First is Aditya L1 spacecraft. Now it is a scientific mission which will be used to study sun in much greater, greater detail. It will be placed at Lagrange point 1. That is why Aditya L1 spacecraft. It will be expected launch will be done in September. Second is ExpoSat satellite. ExpoSat. To study X-rays 
that are streaming through the outer space. Next is NISAR or NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar. Now NISAR satellite, it is being jointly developed by both NASA as well as ISRO. It will study various natural processes on the surface of the earth, the earth's ice sheets, its inner working, ecosystems. So it will study all these for three years in radar frequency. What is general radar frequency? It ranges from 5 megahertz to 130 gigahertz. Next, we have the Gaganyaan mission, which will be India's first human space flight project. Then we are also trying to develop small satellite launch vehicles to reduce the cost of launching smaller satellites and a reusable launch vehicle, which will be useful in our future human space flights. Then we have the Lupex mission, which is also being called as Chandrayaan 4 mission by many ISRO scientists. Now this Lupex mission, also known as Lunar Polar Exploration Mission, it will explore the southern pole of moon. So this mission is in collaboration with JAXA, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. It will have two components, a lander and a rover. The lander will be provided by India, whereas the rover will be provided by Japan. Okay. Now this particular mission, it will study in detail the south pole of moon. It will drill, it will collect samples, it will analyze the samples and it will also study night survival on moon. What is night survival? So currently you guys know that the duration for this Chandrayaan 3 mission is 14 days this lunar, uh, this lander and rover. Why 14 days? Because one day of moon is equivalent to 14 days on earth. One night is equivalent to 14 days. Okay, so it has a 28 day cycle out of which 14 days is day, 14 days is night. So during daytime, because the sun is shining, the solar cells that are available on the rover, they will power it. Now, once the day ends, the sunlight won't be available. So, the solar energy won't be available for the rover to work. So, what will happen? It will shut down. However, this particular Lupex mission, it will try to demonstrate night survival on moon through various technologies that will be used in this project. Next, we have Shukrayan, which is already in work. Shukra is a Hindi term for the planet Venus. So this particular project is already in the works to study Venus. Next, we also have plans to return to Mars. Mangalyan was a raging success. We, also, we plan to return to Mars once again. Next, you know that Russia, Russian Space Agency, it is one of the most advanced space agency of the world. Right? However, there have been sanctions that have been imposed on Russia because of the Russia-Ukraine war. So there is a void that is created, which India, ISRO will try to fill in this void that has been created due to sanctions on Russia. As a part of this, we are expected to launch European Space Agency's satellites known as Proba 3 satellites in the year 2024. So this is about the various missions, upcoming missions of ISRO. Now the mains practice questions. The first question, while deforestation can cause a reduction in forest as carbon sinks, there are many other threats to forest carbon sequestration capabilities. Elaborate. So you know that deforestation, how it will impact ability to sequester carbon? The number of trees will reduce. So the ability to sequester carbon will also reduce. But apart from that, we have already learned what? Global warming can reduce photosynthesis ability. Also, the old forests, 
they have less ability to sequester carbon compared to the new forest okay so you can mention both these things with examples in this answer it is only for 10 marks and 150 words the second question how can childhood TB cases affect India's aim to achieve TB elimination by 2025? You can mention how we have set this ambitious goal to achieve elimination by 2025. However, childhood TB is one big problem. Why? India has almost one third of these cases. Most of them, or according to a report in 2022 itself, most of them, they remain undetected. There are problems associated with detection of this particular variant, this childhood TB. You can mention that instead of smear testing, we need to go to microscopy testing, sorry, molecular testing instead of microscopy testing, right? Then later you can mention the various initiatives that India is taking, but we need to focus on childhood TB because children they are more vulnerable to this disease compared to the adults. So that you can end your answer. This is again 10 marks and 150 words. So with that we come to an end to this particular session. I hope you have understood all the concepts we discussed today. So thank you very much and have a very good day ahead.